All right. In the last meeting, I discussed the, the course description, most essential learning competency and activities, topics and philosophy, course requirements. I also added the class rules and regulations, as well as the class awards and recognition. I am certain that you, rem you remember it all. So before we start our new lesson, I want you to write in your notebook or any pad paper any words or concepts that you think are related to philosophy. When you hear the word philosophy, what comes to your mind? Often a student will have had some sort of introduction to philosophy and will give the standard definition, love of wisdom, or say something like it is the study of the way people think. And sometimes they are confused and, and about difference between psychology and philosophy. Well, if you write uh, words such as love of wisdom, thinking, thoughts, philosophers, and any other related words, you are correct. Our topic for today is meaning and process of doing philosophy. Our content standard, the learner understands the meaning and process of doing philosophy. Performance standard, the learner reflects on a concrete experience in a philosophical way. Most essential learning competency, distinguish a holistic perspective from a partial, partial point of view. To achieve this, we have unpacked the most essential learning competency and created specific objectives. One, explain the different definitions of philosophy using CSD table, complete summarized discuss table, that's cognitive. Analyze a holistic perspective from a partial point of view using Venn diagram, cognitive. Realize the importance of holistic perspective in doing philosophy through a story on moral dilemma. Effective. Four, write an exit pass that contains concrete experiences in doing philosophy and using a holistic point of view, psychomotor. So, are you ready to learn today? Yes, me too. As time goes by, we encounter many scenarios in our life making us ask questions such as, am I really happy? What do I want? What's more important, doing things right or doing, doing the right thing or doing things right? What is life after COVID-19? Is there hope for humanity? If you have yourself such question, then you have already engaged in philosophy. How many of you would consider yourselves philosophers? Yes, we are all philosophers in our own little way. Philosophy started in 16th century in Eastern and Western Greece. Some resources said that in the West philosophy started in West philosophy. It started with Thales of Miletus, who asked questions on basic stuff of the universe and considered as the first father of philosophy. But it was Socrates who are more famously remembered to be the father of Western philosophy because of his great questions on life, the invention of philosophical ethics, influence of Socratic method. He, also the, he is also the great teacher of Aristotle who mentored Alexander the Great. The term was um, coined by Pythagoras, known for his Pythagorean theorem. It comes from two Greek words, philo, meaning love, Sophia, wisdom. That does it means, does it means love of wisdom. And lover of wisdom, lovers of wisdom, we call them philosophos. In Filipino, philosopho. So since philosophy is love of wisdom, it's important to define wisdom. When we say wisdom, it deals with the principle of things, the first cause of all beings, the understanding of meaning of one's existence, and the importance of things around him. 
So when we say wisdom, it's not just an, an application of knowledge, but it's dealing with the principle of things, the, the very cause, the meaning of existence, and understanding things around you. For example, when I ask you, what are you thinking? And you said nothing. I will ask you again, why are you thinking nothing? And how come you think that you are thinking about nothing? Do you understand the cause of your thinking and why it's important to think? And to think about what you're thinking. Diba? In this series of questions, we are trying to seek what, why, and how we're thinking. We want to discover more about our existence, our value, and everything about us and around us. Philosophy is a science. It follows certain steps or employs procedures or as a body of knowledge. Um, it provides methodologies and insights on how societal questions such as moral dilemmas can be answered. As an, as an intellectual activity, philosophy is an analytic procedure addressing individual thought processes such as resolving conflict and confusion. We test positions, we analyze our beliefs, and we, it is prescribed by logic, the reason, and ethics leading to what we call wisdom. Philosophy is a natural light of reason. It investigates things not by using other laboratory apparatus or equipment, neither on the basis of supernatural. Thomas Aquinas believes that there is truth beyond human intelligence. Philosophy is the study of all things and considered as super subject because it covered all aspects of human knowledge. Philosophy has principles. Number one, letter A, rather, principle of identity. Whatever it is, whatever is not. Everything is what it is. Everything it is own being and not being is not being. So everything has its own identity. If it's not a being, it's not a being. Okay? Principle of non-contradiction. It is impossible for a thing to be and not to be at the same time and at, at the same uh, place. No? So it's impossible possible for you not to be a human and to be a human at the same time. It's impossible for our body to be um, in different uh, places because it's just one body. Principle of excluded middle. A thing is either or not, everything must be either or not between being and not being. There is no middle ground possible. So it's either exists or not exists. Sufficient principle of sufficient reason. Nothing exists without a sufficient reason for its being and existence. Everything has its own reason and purpose. Eh, ma'am, wala po eh. Um, I don't know the, the, my purpose in life or I don't know what's the purpose of this thing. Maybe we, you need to discover. That's why we are going to um, study philosophy to discover things about you and the things around you. Autonomy is the ultimate goal of philosophy. It is the freedom of being able to decide for yourself and what you will believe in by using your reasoning abilities. We consider our parents, teachers, friends, and classmates' advice, but it does not mean that we are being controlled or dictated by it. We base our decisions through critical thinking, reasoning, and deep reflection. So that's the purpose or the ultimate goal of philosophy. We want you to be free from influence of other, that we consider their advices, their ideas, but it does not necessarily mean that we are controlled or dictated by it.
Now, I want you to complete, the, summarize, and discuss the, t um, the table. Research at least five definitions of philosophy. Write it down and make summary. Choose one representative that will discuss it. In this activity, we will realize that every definition has its own origin, author, and background. The definition depends on the author, the time, the place, and other factors affecting the conceptualization. In philosophy, it is vital to see the holistic perspective and the partial point of view, or your view and view of other people. So when we say holistic perspective versus partial point of view, holistic perspective is also known as holism, it comes from Greek word holos, which means all, entire, totality. It looks all the aspect of the given problem or situation. All aspects are given importance when making conclusions. They are together to form a general view of the problem or situation. When we say partial point of view, it's a way of method. One sees or perceives the reality or phenomenon. It's based on one component parts of a wool. It looks at only limited number of aspects of the given problem or situations. For example, for holistic perspective, the judges listen first to both stories of victim and suspect before making any conclusion about the matter. Because when we say justice, we listen to both sides, uh, whether victim or the suspect, because Justice is um, analyzing both sides. And if, if we don't have any evidence, enough evidence, we cannot um, uh, say that the suspect is the killer or the criminal. We, we cannot conclude. It takes a lot of evidences, facts to say that um, the suspect is the, is the killer or the criminal. So we need to see all um, aspects affecting the, the situations. For the partial point of view, the judges listen to the victims accused of suspect stealing of money and sentence the suspect for the lifetime imprisonment. Ba? So sounds familiar? Um, are you experiencing it? Do you have any experience with it? That one has a holistic perspective and partial point of view towards you as human being. Na, for example, one, your family, your friends see you as a nice uh, human being, that you are kind, that you are generous, while other people see you as um, bad as maarte, mayabang, etc. Because they don't know who you are and the complete information is about you. So the holistic, the holistic and partial uh, point of view is a very important to, to know. So I want you to analyze holistic perspective and partial point of view using Venn diagram. And I want you to answer these questions. Do you think that it is important to understand the definition of philosophy? Is it possible for a discipline to develop and flourish without philosophy or love for wisdom? What is the difference between holistic perspective and partial point of view? Why is it important to distinguish two, two point of view? So let's um, read this um, story. It is shared to me by Teacher Sharon of Speech Coach. They have office in Kalumpang Marikina and they cater students who want to be fluent English speakers. The story goes like this. In 1975, Juan and Marcia were happily engaged and they were living in a small isolated barrio in Visayas. One day, Juan decided to ask Marcia if he could work in the Bayan so he can earn more money for them and have a better life and get married. Marcia agreed with Juan but asked him to write to him every week. Juan agreed to his promise. After three months, Marcia never received 
a single letter from Juan, she started to worry. She asked her parents if she can do if she can go to Bayan and look for Juan. The parents declined and said that maybe Juan was just busy working and that they were sure he is okay. But Marcia was so worried that she decided to go to Bayan and planned to sneak out during the night when her parents were asleep. There was only one way to go to the Bayan and that is through a banka and there were only two in the barrio, one owned by Mang Tomas and the other was Cardo's. Marsha went to Cardo first. Cardo thought it was too dangerous because it was night and the tides were high and quite unpredictable. But Marsha insisted and she said she could pay him some money to help her. Instead, Cardo didn't want Marsha's money but something else. He wanted to sleep with her for just one night. Marsha refused immediately and went to Mang Tomas. The old man said to Marsha that he cannot help because it was too dark and the tides were too dangerous. Marsha insisted, but Mang Tomas said that she, could, she should go home and stop sneaking out or she can go to Cardo. Marsha said that she already went to Cardo but gave her an indecent proposal. Mang Tomas was surprised and said no to Marsha. Out of desperation, and worry for Juan, Marsha went back to Cardo and agreed to his proposal. In the late evening, Cardo fulfilled the, their deal and brought Marsha to the Bayan. Marsha found Juan after a whole day of searching. She saw Juan working very hard in the marketplace and immediately talked to him. Juan was very surprised to see Marsha and apologized that he didn't try it because he was working two jobs and has already saved up a month, lot of money so they, have, they can have better life in the barrio and finally get married. When Marsha heard this, she cried and Juan asked her why. Marsha confessed everything to Juan and he was speechless. Juan ultimately decided to break up with Marsha and leave her. Questions? Did Juan make a right decision? Why or why not? What can you say about Marsha? Does she deserve some forgiveness? What kind of view did Juan and Marsha had? Explain your answer. If you were Juan or Marsha, what will you do? I want you to answer the table below to use holistic perspective. Aspect to consider, years of engagement, year of engagement. Describe the people's way of living during that year, places, and description of place. What is your proposed solution after having a holistic perspective in the situation? All right, for our valuing application and generalization, I want you to write an exit pass that contains concrete experience in doing philosophy and using holistic point of view. Being a student, how can you use philosophy and your learning on a holistic point of view in your daily living? Write one scenario. For additional activities, I want you to research the different branches of philosophy, watch the Plato's Allegory of the Cave, that's the link of, uh, that's the YouTube link, or read the discussion in lesson two. For the quiet questions, how do you describe the people inside the cave? What are the stages? Of the liberated prisoners' experience outside the cave, describe each stages. What does Plato's allegory of the cave tell us about how we recognize things? How do people believe in illusion and accept it as reality? How do we define truth and reality? What happened to people when reality is revealed? What are the other caves in our modern life in which people might be imprisoned or feel imprisoned? Describe the specific scenario. That's all for today. I hope that you learned a lot. You may comment below your takeaways, realizations, additional information. Thank you so much for listening.